Good morning everyone and a really warm welcome to our online service for St Stephen's Church wherever you are. I'm Caroline Montgomery and I head up the Family Life Ministry here at St Stephen's and whether you're joining us for the first time or if you've been tuning in to our other services over the last few weeks a really warm welcome to you and we hope that you enjoy being with us today. This is the third week in our series, Lockdown Life Essentials. The first week, Rachel Bedford talked to us about our identity, that, that God loves us so much. We are loved by him. Then last week, Hugo Foxwood spoke about grace, the grace we have received from God and the grace that we can give to others. This week, we're going to be looking at peace and Rachel will be speaking to us shortly. If you'd like to catch up on those services that you missed, you can find that on saint-stevens.org.uk forward slash online. I'll pray for us and then we'll join in together and sing Ask, Seek, Knock. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you love us and thank you that as we walk through this difficult season, you are with us. Help us, Lord, as we join in this service together to feel connected to you and to each other. Amen. Let's join together and sing and Lauren and the team will help us with the actions. Reading my B.I.B. early And this is what it says to me it Tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J.E.S.U.S. Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door What it says to me It tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J.E.S.U.S. Came down to us and gave his best Out of doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. God opens up the door. Oh, oh, oh. 
That was great. What an uplifting song and such a timely reminder that God always hears us. If you have children with you and you haven't already, you might want to download the kids' activity pages as we move into the more adult and talky part of the services so they have something that they can be doing as well. Our reading this morning is John chapter 14 verses 25 to 27 and my husband Richard will read that for us and then Rachel will speak to us. So first of all, over to you Richard. I'm reading from John chapter 14, beginning at verse 25. This is Jesus talking to his disciples not long before his arrest. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. As I mentioned at the start of this series two weeks ago, Paul wrote 13 of the 27 books in the New Testament. All of these books are letters that he wrote to Christians scattered throughout the Roman Empire. In every letter, he greets the Christians with this phrase, grace and peace. Last week, Hugo spoke about grace, and this week I'm going to speak about peace. Jesus knew his followers needed peace. In our reading today from John 14, he says just before he dies to the disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. And then when he rose from the dead and appeared to the disciples who were terrified, what was it that he first said to them? Peace be with you. He knew that they needed his peace. Jesus knows that we need his peace now, perhaps more than ever. Paul's choice of words in these letters are really significant. He says in the introduction every time, grace and peace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. His peace is a gift from him to us. And in light of that, I want to say two things this morning. One, Jesus's peace is relational. It's a gift from him to us. He says to the anxious disciples, my peace I give you. If I were in church, standing behind the altar, leading us in communion, I would use my hands to show this. I would say, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another the sign of the peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> peace, peace be with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. It might be that you're really missing that part of our church services. It could also be that you're quite glad because you find the peace quite cringe. But whatever the case, we receive Jesus's peace and then we pass it on. It's relational. And so if this is true, let me just list a few things that Jesus's peace is not. One, Jesus's peace is not about the absence of war. We celebrated that last Friday on VE Day and peacetime is a good thing, but it's not what Jesus is talking about here. Two, Jesus' peace is not about quiet. Many of you will know the book Five Minutes Peace about a family of elephants. I've come back to it several times during lockdown, relating more than ever to Mrs. Large, who is desperate for five minutes peace from her children. What she really wants, though, is peace and quiet. That's what we're talking about here. Jesus doesn't promise his disciples quiet. Three, Jesus's peace is not something that we can summon within ourselves. 
our society has moved very far, very quickly in breaking taboos about mental health. And this is a good thing. And we can see that this is bringing hope to many people. However, much of the secular advice about how anxious minds find peace is rooted in self-help. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus didn't say, if you want peace, you should practice mindfulness or write a well-being journal or do some colouring in or some breathing exercises. Don't get me wrong, all these things are good, but they suggest that if you do them, you will find your own peace. You can summon it from within yourself. I just don't find the evidence of that in our society. We're doing all these things and yet we're more anxious, fearful and stressed than ever. Jesus suggested that we need his peace, that we couldn't summon it from within ourselves. His peace is relational. Paul writes again and again, peace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we're going to practice mindfulness, let's do Christian mindfulness which is prayer. To pray is to say, I can't find peace in myself. Jesus, I need yours. If we're to keep a well-being journal, let's make it a prayer journal where we write the prayers that we want to say to Jesus, where we pause to listen to what he might say back to us. If we're stressed and we choose to do some colouring in, that's something I sometimes do to just calm myself down. But I pray Jesus be present to me as I do this. Jesus says in John 14, the world will give you trouble. For example, pandemics that cause anxiety and uncertainty and dislocation. But he says, I will give you peace. It's a gift from him. It originates in him. So one, Jesus's peace is relational. Two, Jesus's peace goes deep. Mrs. Large's peace in this book is easily shattered. Her children are constantly interrupting her. And I think that's often how we imagine peace as a fragile, short lived thing that can just sort of escape through our fingertips. And yet I want to suggest that peace is much more gutsy than that, much more solid. Think less dove and more anchor. Both pictures are used in the Bible to describe peace but we often forget the anchor. A ship's anchor is heavy and solid and immovable and this is the sort of peace that Jesus is talking about. Before I moved to Twickenham I lived in northwest London and worked in a church where half of the congregation were elderly people who had emigrated here in the 50s and 60s as part of what's known as the Windrush generation. These were lively, colourful characters who wore hats to church and told it straight. I spent quite a lot of my time visiting these individuals and listening to their stories. These are people who had battled racism of the worst kind, poverty, exclusion, discrimination, and who had suffered chronic homesickness and dislocation. And yet they loved Jesus and they spoke constantly of his faithfulness. Do you know more than that, the characteristic I sensed in them was peace, a deep peace, not one that they'd summoned from within themselves, but one which they'd received from Jesus again and again and which had gone deep. Quite often on these visits, we would sing together and by far the most popular request was a hymn called Blessed Assurance. This hymn says that when you live in relationship with Jesus over time, you grow a peace that you can be sure of. Perhaps you've met other Christians who carry that with them. It's a holy thing, a gift from Jesus to us. The chorus of that hymn goes like this. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. Do you know, I've been thinking about those elderly people this week because I saw that 
in their parish. It's been reported that they have the highest level of COVID infections in the country. And yet I know 100% that those people will be sat in their homes singing that song with all their hearts because they have that deep peace in them, that deep assurance. Meeting those people taught me one very important thing, that there are no shortcuts in the Christian life. But if you spend time with Jesus daily in prayer, you receive his peace as a gift again and again and again. You carry with you an assurance and that assurance helps to squash anxiety and fear. It's not a short-lived, easily shattered peace. It's rock solid. It's deep, unshakable. John Newton, the 18th century slave owner who dramatically converted to Christianity and wrote another great hymn, Amazing Grace, said this, Assurance grows when we've been brought low and helped, when we've been wounded and healed, when we've been cast down and raised again, when we've been snatched from danger and placed in safety. When these things have been repeated to us a thousand times over, we begin to learn to trust God. And this trust, when habitual, bears the name of assurance. This puts words to what I experienced when I met those elderly people, praying, singing. These were habitual to them and so God's peace in them ran deep. They just closed their eyes and sing it from their heart. This is my story. This is my song. Friends, here's the question. What's your story. Do you long for more peace in your life, particularly as we weather this Covid storm? Jesus promises peace and he wants to give it to you today. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to strive for it. You don't have to summon it from within yourself. You just have to ask him for it. How do we do that? I think just in two simple steps. First, it starts up here in our minds. We need to rewire our thinking about peace. Maybe you've been striving throughout the lockdown to find peace in yourself. And I think Jesus wants to say to you today, stop, give yourself a break, receive my peace as a gift. And second, I think we have to ask for his peace daily. In the morning, we wake up, Jesus, that peace that you promised the disciples, will you give it to me today? And then just pray that prayer as many times as you need to during the day. Assurance comes from praying and living that again and again and again. I sense this week that there's a few people listening who haven't prayed for years, if at all. And, you know, this is for you. Jesus wants to give you his peace today. If you want it, would you just ask? Keep it simple. Just pray from your heart. Just as we sing this next song, say, Jesus, that's what I'm longing for. I'm longing for your peace. Would you meet with me now? And then when you've done that, would you maybe tell another Christian so that they can pray with you? If you've been walking with Jesus for a while, I want to say to you today, keep going. Being a Christian is a marathon, not a sprint. And as you walk daily with Jesus, you too will grow in that unshakable assurance, that rock solid peace. As Paul wrote to the churches in his letter, so I say to you, peace be with you from the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to sing a song now called Yes and Amen. And in the first verse, it talks about Jesus's peace. It says, you have filled me with peace. It might be that you have experienced Jesus's peace before and you want to give thanks for that and pray for it again. It might be that as we sing this song, this is the first time that you've ever asked for Jesus's peace. I encourage you to use this moment now. I'm going to pray just before we sing. 
Jesus, thank you for the gift of your peace. Thank you that we don't have to summon it from within ourselves, but that you give it to us. I pray for every single person watching this now, that they would sense your peace afresh today. And those who perhaps never experienced it before would be bold enough to ask, knowing that you long to give it. Amen. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're oh my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful, you Yes and amen Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near You pulled me from the ashes, you have broken every curse Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but sing. Thank you, Kira, and thank you, Rachel. I can certainly say that I have experienced the peace of Jesus relationally and deeply in my life. As a church, we are caring for others in many different ways at this time, and Mandy is going to tell us about the recent expressions of caring that we are involved in. Over to you, Mandy. Hi, everyone. We have set up four food bank hubs, which means people can drop food to those hubs if they can't actually make it to the food bank at the specified times. So that's great. Um, those food bank hubs are also hubs for fabric donations because we got involved with Scrub Hubs UK, um, sewing scrubs for the NHS and key workers. 
and we're now going into mask making. Oh, we're working with Embracing Age now, who um, Tina English had an inspired idea to provide the 850 care workers in our borough with self-care goodie bags. So we are helping to write cards and draw lovely pictures to put in those goodie bags too. Also, I uh, got Alpha Online going as well, where 12 people are now exploring faith and what that means for them. So that's what we've been doing. Thank you, Mandy. And now Jez would like to say something to Mandy. Yes, thank you, Caroline. I did want to jump in at this point because as well as hearing that update from Mandy, very sadly for us on the St. Stephen's staff team, but excitingly for Mandy, uh, this is Mandy's final Sunday whilst on our staff team because she's going to be finishing after seven and a half years of being part of our team, moving on to uh, new things, new challenges, though good news for us staying as a member of the congregation. And so I just wanted to ask Mandy um, a couple of questions about her highlights as she looks back and what it, she's going on to do next. And I want to say, uh, Mandy, you have just been an incredible member, not only of our church family, but of our staff team. Uh, you've got such an extraordinary heart for people. You always have time for people. Uh, you long for people to connect with God and you've done brilliant work helping with our welcome uh, to new people at St. Stephen's. You've particularly help people to find their place in the church. You've had a heart for supporting those who are single and including single parents. You've given brilliant support to the Alpha courses and the life groups. Um, and you just seem to have an effortless ability to bring together events and socials and gatherings that, that help people to form community. So we're going to miss you hugely on our team. You're such a much loved member of our team. But I want to go right back to seven and a half years ago. And when you came onto the team, as we hear some of your highlights, because actually I know it wasn't the easiest time for you back then when you came to join us. Just tell us a little bit, if you would, about that time and some of your highlights since. Um, so I joined the team at a difficult time. Um, my dad had died in between my first and second interview. Um, so I came to the team in a, in a hard, I was in a hard place. Um, but being on team with uh, just amazing people, so loving and supportive and encouraging, just really helped me to grow in my faith and uh, yeah, just just kind of deal with life. Um, I have seen an abundance of God's provision for me and my family and this team has helped me raise my two daughters as well. Um, I've loved taking the congregation to focus, um, been passionate about Alpha and you know all the skills that I have um, that I'm taking with me have been um, developed whilst I've been with this team so thank you. Well Mandy there is no doubt that you have been a huge blessing to us so thank you for all that you've given to us as a team and to us as a church family. Um, just tell us a little bit then about what it is that you're going on to do next. So I am going on to be the operations manager and relationship and sex educator for a charity um, called LVA Trust. They deliver um, relationship and sex education in schools across the borough. Um, they also do small groups and mentoring and just really speak into the lives of young people and through fostering. Um, that's something I've become really passionate about. So although I'm sad at leaving, I'm really excited for the future. And um, yeah, I just really feel that this has come from God. Uh, well, there is no doubt that our loss is going to be LVA's gain and Mandy we would love to be praying for you as you make this move make this transition how could we most helpfully be praying for you I would love you all to be praying for this transition there are areas that I feel very uh, comfortable doing because I've developed those skills working at the church but um, there's a lot that I don't know and there's a lot that I have to learn um, in order to get that right to speak into the lives of the young people so the transition um and also that i can just continue developing gifts that god has given me to um to just bless the charity that i'm going to be working with um but also the young people as well 
Well, Mandy, we would love to take a moment to pray for you now. And we wish, of course, that we could be saying this thank you to you and praying for you in person. We would be doing this in a church service, all gathered together if we could be, but obviously we can't be at the moment. But just before I pray, we've got a few other gifts coming your way as a little thank you in due course. But just for now, as a little token of our appreciation, we've got a very small offering, a little token of our appreciation, which I want to now through the mysteries of online services, pass your way. And who knows, they might even transform into something even more spectacular as you receive these as I pass them to you. So Mandy, a little gift from us to you to say a huge thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Mandy. And we want to pray that you would be with her in this transition from being part of our staff team to stepping into this new role that she is taking on. Uh, we thank you so much for all that she will bring to that role. We pray that she will grow and gain all sorts of new and exciting experiences through the work that she's about to undertake. We pray that you'll give her everything that she needs. And we pray that through this new role, you will help her to be such a blessing to even more young people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Mandy is amazing and we will miss her hugely as a staff team. We're now going to the Foxwood family who will lead us in our prayers. Dear Lord, I pray for those who may be lonely at this time and needing support from others. Please help those who are anxious or worried about loved ones caught up in this epidemic. Look after those who maybe live alone, or children who are missing their friends, teachers and social lives. Thank you that we are seeing these small acts of kindness springing up everywhere that can make such a difference. But we pray now for our local area and we pray your blessing particularly on those who serve the vulnerable in it, whether through our own church teams or through local organisations. We particularly lift up to you the Crossway Pregnancy Crisis Centre uh, that's coping with an increased caseload at this time. We pray your blessing too on Crosslight and the work it does in helping those who suffer from financial over indebtedness. And we pray also for the work of embracing age, Lord Jesus, and its vision to care uh, for uh, the vulnerable elderly. So we pray, Lord Jesus, for all those who serve in these areas. We pray you'd give them your strengthen your joy. We pray you'd resource them, that they would be like well-watered gardens, like springs of water that never fail. Amen. Dear God, please support all the frontline workers in our nation as they risk their lives for us. Please also guide the Prime Minister in making the right choices and decisions. Thank you for the NHS and those who run it. Help them through this challenging time. Amen. And I'd like to pray for the global church now. Lord, we lift our brothers and sisters all over the world who are being salt and light in their communities at this difficult time. We pray particularly for poor communities globally who are dealing with food insecurity, loss of livelihood and fear because of the lockdown. We pray for nations with weak public health systems who are struggling to cope with the virus. Please bless organisations like Tear Fund, Asha and Soma who are working in these difficult situations. Protect their staff and help them be effective. Please envision and equip your church globally to be messengers of hope. To start conversations that reimagine how we can emerge from this crisis with more restorative, loving societies and economies. Help your people all over the world work to see their nations rebuild in ways that protect the poor, see justice and equality, and enable us to live in harmony with the natural world. Amen. Amen. Now for our updates this week. We have pause for praise and we'd love you to join in daily and take a moment to pause for praise. Focus on God and be refreshed. 
There are three different playlists, so you can choose whether to listen to contemporary, family or classical worship, and these will be updated daily. If you have any suggestions of worship songs to be included, please send them to us as a YouTube link to pause praise at saint-stevens.org.uk and for more information and join in go to saint-stevens.org.uk forward slash prayer hyphen worship. Then Thy Kingdom Come is an annual prayer movement that takes place from Ascension Day through to Pentecost. So this year, from the 21st to the 31st of May, we will be joining again with millions around the world praying Thy Kingdom Come. And we invite you to join in as well. Do keep a lookout on our website and our social media in the coming days for how you can do that practically. The next Sunday, we're really excited to have our youth take over the service as we look at gratitude, the last in our series of Lockdown Life Essentials. So do join us for an energy packed service at 1030. I'm going to say a blessing as we come to the end of our service this morning and then Sarah and Andy Ricketts will lead us in our final song, Strength Will Rise As We Wait Upon The Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now and each moment of every day. Amen. Keep safe everyone and we'll see you soon.
Amen. Amen.